Hello everybody welcome to our channel Radiology Interesting Update. Our lecture today is about placental chorioangioma. Introduction. Chorioangioma is the commonest benign tumor of the placenta. Its incidence is about 1% of placentas examined at delivery. It is seen more frequently in multiple pregnancies and in female babies. It is formed by excessive proliferation of blood vessels in the chorionic villi and are perfused by the fetal circulation. These lesions have no malignant potential because they are sometimes classified as placental hematomas rather than true neoplasm. Location. They tend to occur on the fetal side of the placenta, close to cord insertion. Clinical picture. In most cases, chorioangiomas are asymptomatic and incidental findings. In the majority of cases, it is smaller microscopic and of no clinical significance. If it increases in size greater than 5 cm, then it may be associated with serious maternal and fetal complications including fetal growth restriction, polyhydromnios, and placental abruption. Types and Patterns There are three histological patterns of chorioangiomas have been described, angiomatous, cellular, and degenerative. 1. The angiomatous is the most common, with numerous small areas of endothelial tissue capillaries, and blood vessels surrounded by placental stroma. 2. The cellular pattern has abundant endothelial cells within a loose stroma. 3. The degenerative pattern has calcification, necrosis, or hyalinization. Complications. Large tumors act as arteriovenous shunts and cause complications. Maternal complications are preeclampsia, preterm labor, placental abruption polyhydromnios, and postpartum hemorrhage. Fetal congestive heart failure may develop because of the increased blood flow through the low-resistance vascular channels in the chorioangioma acting as an arteriovenous shunt. Other associated fetal complications are non-immune hydrops, fetal demise, hemolytic anemia, congenital anomalies, fetal thrombocytopenia, cardiomegaly, intrauterine growth restriction, and neonatal death. Imaging Finding Ultrasound. Typically, a chorioangioma is located near the insertion of the cord and protrudes into the amniotic cavity. Chorioangioma can appear as well circumscribed, hypoechoic lesions compared to the surrounding placental tissue. It usually contains anechoic cystic areas and can be seen as distinctly separate to normal surrounding placental tissue. Some heterogeneous areas caused by degenerative processes and internal hemorrhage can be seen. Chorioangiomas can also rarely appear pedunculated. Doppler often demonstrates low resistance pulsatile flow within the anechoic cystic areas, which represent enlarged vascular channels. Large chorioangiomas may undergo spontaneous infarction with decreased echogenicity, decreased tumor volume, and decreased blood flow on color Doppler images. Large tumors can be of variable shapes and can contain fibrous septi. The use of Doppler is helpful in the evaluation since this is a vascular lesion with prominent blood flow. This may help in differentiating it from a hematoma or fibrin collection that would not have any significant blood flow. MRI. MRI usually demonstrates a heterogeneous mass. Signal characteristics include, T1, isointense to placenta if uncomplicated can be hyperintense if there has been a hemorrhage. T2, high signal intensity, can be heterogeneous an appearance similar to that of a hemangioma. This image is a coronal and axial T2 weighted images show a well circumscribed mass, long arrows, arising from the placenta immediately adjacent to the insertion of the umbilical cord, short arrow. This is the classic location for a chorioangioma. Differential diagnosis. Subamniotic hematoma. Partial hydatidiform mole. Submucosal uterine fibroid. Submucosal lyomyoma of the uterus. Placental teratoma. Atypical placental venous lake, on grayscale imaging. Treatment and prognosis. Small tumors are often monitored with ultrasound every 6 to 8 weeks, whereas large tumors require serial ultrasound examinations more frequently every 1 to 2 weeks. Some tumors may even regress spontaneously during pregnancy. The overall prognosis is somewhat dependent on the presence or development of hydrops fatalis. 
Lesions larger than 4 cm are considered to produce hemodynamic effects on the fetus. Therapeutic amniodrainage is an option if there is excessive polyhydramnios. Here we come to the end of our lecture. Thank you for watching and goodbye.